us find the recursion process as an alternate for a while loop. The factorial and the power program which we have done using recursion will replace the traditional for loop and we have seen that particular replacement. Let us now treat this recursion as an alternate of even a while loop also. We have seen how exactly we find some of the digits of a given integer number using a simple while loop. So what we do is we more the number with 10, divide the number with 10, keep on doing this particular task till the number reduces to 0 and every time when the number is extracted, the number is kept on adding with the value of s. Why don't we try out this process using recursion? So if it is recursion, then you have to get ready to get renamed. Earlier I had named you like fact and power. This time I'll give a name to you as sum. Right? So now your name is what? Sum. So your name is sum. And you know again only one value. If I give you the input as 0, you will say the sum as 0. When I give you a number as 0, you will say, yes, I know the sum and sum is 0. If I give you anything else, you will say, I don't know what is sum of, say, 12. If I give you sum of 3, you said you will not know this particular sum of 3. But when I give you 0, you will say sum of 0. So now your name is what? Sum. How many arguments you accept? Only one argument you know what is sum of 0. So that is when n equals to 0, the answer is 0. So sum takes one argument, number n, if it is 0, then the answer is 0. And this, this time, I'll put one more limitation that you can add two numbers. You can add two numbers. But you'll not be able to multiply two numbers, you'll not be able to subtract, you'll not be able to divide. If I ask you what is 1 into 1, for the time being, you should say that I don't know what is 1 into 1. But if I ask you what is 1 plus 1, you should say, yes, 1 plus 1 is 2, right? Okay, so your name is now sum. You have knowledge of sum of 0 as 0 and you have the limitations saying that you can add two numbers. Let's take up a simple scenario. Assume that the input which is given is 523. So now this is my variable n. So I'll say I'm going to accept one number as 523. So, is this number 0? No. Then, you'll say, if a number is not 0, what I'll do is, I'll keep the last digit with me. How do you get the last digit? Mod 10. Yes. Last digit. And then, I'll ask someone to do this particular operation of finding the sum of remaining digits, that is 52. Right? So, you said that I'm going to keep 3 with me and I'll ask sum of 52. When 52 is received, again the same task goes. Since 52 is not 0, you'll say number sum of 52 cannot be found. But you'll say, I can extract this digit. What is the extraction process? Mod 10, you'll say 2 with me. And then you'll ask someone to find sum of 5. So, 523 from that, how do I get 52? You'll divide the number by 10. And how do I get this particular 3? Mod of 10. So 3 plus sum of 52, then 2 plus sum of 5, then what do you say? So you say it's sum of 5. I don't know what is sum of 5, but I can extract 5 and I'll ask you to find sum of 0. What is sum of 0? So when sum of 0 is returned, when, when you ask me to find sum of 0, I'll say that I know sum of 0. Sum of 0 is what? 0. The process goes of this. 0 plus 5 is 5. 5 plus 2 is 7. And 7 plus 3 is 10. The process of returning these values keeps on rolling back. And at some point of time, the number turns out as 0. When 0 comes back, the answer is return 0. And finally, I get the values 2. So 5 plus 2 plus 3 is 10. Right? So what are the things which we said in the ladder diagram? Let's implement this in a code format. Let's put a program for implementing this. See here. So I have this particular code partially written for you. SUH and CONUH, void main, int n and s, where n is the number, s is the one which is going to store the sum. I'll ask the user to enter a number, read that number as n. So once you are at the number, call the sum function by passing the value of n. And here you'll say s equals to. So n goes to the other place, this function returns a value that is going to go store into s and you will say sum of digits equals percentage d comma s. How this particular n reacts? So 
I'll say if what is the first thing which you did? Is this number what? 0. If n equal to equal to 0, if the number is 0, then what is the answer? The answer is 0. You'll say return 0. So that comes at this place. If at the first instant itself, if the user enters the number as 0, so then 0 goes to this place, 0 matches, it comes back and it says 0. So the, the return is simple process. But what if the number is 523? 523 equal to 0? No. No in the sense, then it goes into else part. What did it? You kept the last digit of the number. How to get the last digit number? We said n mod 10. Plus, you called one more time the sum function. By passing what? Number ex excluding the last digit, that is n by 10. So this 3, from 523, I can obtain 3 by n mod 10. I can obtain... 52 from n by 10. So here sum is going to give a call to sum. This time you can store it into some variable or the entire statement can be enclosed in one more return. So I'll say return n more 10 plus sum n by 10. Right. So here the process of recursion goes in this instruction. So simple. Get the number. Check the number is 0. If not, if number is 0, return the value is 0. If not, keep the last digit pass the remaining digits, last digit can be kept by modding and remaining digits can be sent by say n by 10. I have included one new technique so where you can avoid using int s and then s equals to s plus or just do this particular operation. So when it comes back, it automatically returns these values. If you feel that these instructions are complicated, then say int s equals to 0, s equals to s plus n mod 10 plus sum of this and then you'll say return s. You can try that also or else you can compress this in a much more simplified format where return instructions can contain arithmetic expressions. We'll use that property and implement this particular function. If you feel that the prototype has to be written, the prototype is what? Int, sum and then int. So the prototype, the call and this particular definition. So follow the ladder diagram with this particular example. Keep both the things next to one another and then implement this particular function. Thank you.